Now the programmable logic controller PLC. Okay, PLC. Take a look the name. Programmable logic controller. It's like microcontroller, but it's heavy duty. Okay, when we use a microcontroller in a industrial product, heavy duty product like where the temperature or the voltage fluctuation is a critical issue. Under circumstances, microcontroller is not a good choice. Like in your, how to say, uh, uh, gasoline station or in a very large industry where uh, very heavy machineries are running all the times, okay, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Okay, in that circumstances, microcontroller is not a good choice. Okay, on that circumstances, programmable logic controller PLC is a very, very good choice. So, programming is similar to microcontroller, but it's heavy duty. So, if you consider speed, low speed, cost very high, very high, since it's heavy duty product, industrial product. Packaging is not good as microcontroller or even the Arduino. Complexity, uh, a bit complex to write the program or upload the program, but the programming complexity is not that high. Okay, very simple to very simple to write a program. It's, it's actually a, con a controller. Okay, controller means it just use some logic, how to say, branching operation, like or some loop operation. Okay, very simple thing. So programming is not so complex, but the way you have to download the program is a bit complex, like microcontroller. The same, even it's simpler than the microcontroller, but uh, a bit complex than the microprocessor. Okay, and if we consider application, yes, the application of this type of PLC is in industrial product, heavy duty industrial product. Okay, even in the rain, even in the temperature fluctuation, even in the vibration, it can sustain. Okay, and it can sustain for a long time, longevity. Yes, okay, so it's a heavy duty industrial product. And power consumption. Uh, more than the microcontroller. Okay. So, I can ask you what is the difference between a microcontroller and the uh, PLC. You have to mention this thing. Search in the Google. Okay. Now, another interesting thing is field programmable gate array or FPGA. FPGA is actually a chip, a microchip, where we can build our own logic circuit, any circuit. Okay, as I mentioned in our some other uh, lecture on HDL, where we have shown how we can write a uh, hardware definition, hardware program. Okay, so FPGA can be used for that kind of program. Like we can just upload that program in the FPGA, and our FPGA will work like that logic circuit okay so a logic circuit any kind of logic circuit even a small size processor can be implemented in fpga okay so fpga is very sophisticated uh, item uh, or sophisticated integrated circuit uh, uh, for experiment you have to know what are you going to do or for rnd you need to know what kind of rnd rnd you are going to perform by using this fpga so, depend on your R&D application, you have to choose your FPGA uh, integrated circuit, okay. So, FPGA, you can also find uh, a single chip FPGA or you can say single board FPGA, but you have to understand what are you going to do with this FPGA, okay, or what kind of logic circuit you are going to implement on this FPGA, okay. So, we are going to have another full lecture on the FPGA where you will be able to understand how FPGA works. Okay. Now the single board computer like uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay. So Raspberry Pi is a we say single board computer that means the whole computing system on a single board. Okay. If you see on the figure a computer is not a single board computer like a computer is a processor is on a chip which can be dismantled and we can change the microprocessor on the motherboard, 
RAM is on the different chip or different board. ROM is different chip. Hard disk and the interfacing of hard disk unit is different. Okay. The input unit is totally, how to say, coming from outside. There is no general purpose or low level input device is not integrated with computer system. Okay. But in single board computer, it has GPIO port where we can use low level input output units like LED, like switch, dip switch or uh, uh, you can say uh, push button switch okay, or 7 segment display or uh, LCD display. We can use this kind of things for a buzzer on a single board computer, but on a computer we cannot do it. To interface this kind of low level device or a sensor to integrate all this thing with a computer, we need to build an interfacing unit by using a microcontroller or by using uh, Arduino. Okay, but this is a very very interesting processing board or processing unit or processing hardware which is called single board computer where processor is on on board, RAM, ROM everything on the single board that's why this is called single board computer okay you can see here there are a number of usb ports there are hdmi port there are uh, audio port there uh, there is an audio port there is a wi-fi there is a even rj45 port okay so everything that belongs to a computer also belongs to this kind of single board computer. Beside this thing, it also have a general purpose IO pin, okay, where we can integrate sensors and low level input or output devices, okay, or even the uh, motor controller so that we can drive a motor, okay. So, this is a very, very interesting unit, okay. A number of devices, IoT devices, or even the satellite, as I know satellite is a nano satellite small size satellite are also building based on this this kind of microprocessing unit or single board computer okay so here is the picture of uh, raspberry pi here is some other pictures of raspberry pi and tinker board here is picture of little panda and jetson nano it also depend on our application the cost start from i think uh, Ten dollar that means one thousand taka to around forty fifty thousand taka. Okay, so depends on Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think is three thousand to four thousand taka. You know, Jetson is the Nvidia product. Okay, so Nvidia product means it have a GPU. So if you want to implement AI on your uh, single board computer, or uh, so you can use Jetson Nano. This Nano can be a very very good choice. Even the little panda is also having a very very good GPU. So if you want to implement AI or image processing or signal processing or voice processing on a on a, on, a, on a how to say embedded system on a IoT based system then this kind of devices like Raspberry Pi 4 or Tinkerboard or Jetson TK or Little Panda can be a very very good choice. Okay. Nowadays even the GPU module also can be found separately. So even if you have the if you have low computing speed, you can use external GPU, GPU with the uh, with this kind of processor, and you can enhance the processing speed. Then you can implement AI inside this single board PC. Okay, and also Intel NAC PC and Brix PC. These are the almost the same, very small size uh, computer. Okay, where uh, again it's, it's just a computer just like a computer, like this kind of computer. It's not a single boot computer. You can change the RAM, you can change the uh, solid state. Okay, even there are some versions of NAC PC or there are versions of Brix PC so that you can use your different type of processing unit or different type of uh, uh, yeah, memory unit. Okay, so that is the issue. Okay, so this type of low cost, compact, 
uh, processing unit or compact computer also can be found in the market. In our uh, Mongol Thorik project, we used Intel NAC PC. Okay, uh, it, it, it was, uh, it become old. Now we are going to upgrade this PC, but we use this kind of PC and we are using this is this one for four years. So you, you see our Mongol Thorik works in a very, very rough terrain. So even in the rough terrain, it works perfectly. Okay, so we, we really love this kind of PC, okay, for high performance work. Where processor or where the computer become expensive or where uh, in robotics, where processing is very important, but space complexity is a uh, very, very important consideration issue, issue, where weight is very, very important issue. In that circumstances, this kind of uh, computer can be used. Okay, so that was the end of it is the end of our lecture.